This was the plane that Britain was known for during World War II, the Supermarine Spitfire. It was an amazing fighter plane and loved by pilots for its speed and agility, making it a winning machine in the eyes of the public. But it actually had a huge problem. The issue was that the engine would cut out at crucial moments, especially when it was in a dogfight with a German pilot and had to dive down. On the other hand, the German Luftwaffe's Messerschmitt 109 fighter didn't have any such issues, and that's why the Germans had an advantage. During the war, pilots often faced challenges from British pilots. Britain barely won the Battle of Britain, and a big part of that was due to issues with the Spitfire's engine. If Britain wanted a clear win in World War II, they really needed to fix this weird issue with the Spitfire. They tried everything, even big engineering firms got involved, but no one could solve the problem. Finally, a solution came from an unexpected source, a woman named Betty Schilling. This woman did something with the Spitfire that today it's blamed on her for its role in World War II. Welcome back, everyone, to another video on our channel. The issue with the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine in the Spitfire first came up in 1938. But back then, it wasn't considered a big deal since pilots didn't dive much before World War II. However, in 1940, when the Battle of Britain was at its peak, it became more than just a technical problem. It turned into a matter of survival. And even bigger was the issue of World War II. Before that, the British government had already produced over 20,000 Spitfires, which meant all these planes had the same issue because they all used the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. The seriousness of the situation hit home when the Brits realized that, in addition to the Spitfire, the Royal Air Force had other fighter planes, like the Hawker Hurricane and the Bolton Paul Defiant that also had the same Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. So, with World War II heating up, and on top of that, the Allies facing their biggest historical defeat, things were looking pretty intense. During World War II in 1940, Nazi Germany was fighting against France and Britain. Whenever the Germans came into Allied territory with their Messerschmitt BF-109s, the RAF's Spitfires would go up to counter them. The pilots used advanced maneuvers to dodge each other's bullets, like diving suddenly or climbing quickly. This was pretty common in aerial battles during the war. Planes could engage in fights for hours, sometimes diving down to evade enemy fire. In the past, pilots would instantly nose up and take aim at another plane to fire. Now, during this life-and-death dogfight, if someone's engine fails, it's a real concern. Fortunately, during the Battle of Britain, British pilots had a home field advantage, meaning their fuel supply was close by, allowing them to fight for hours. On the flip side, German pilots had to first cross the English Channel before engaging in battle, and after that, they had to return to their base for refueling. This was a disadvantage for the Germans, and that's probably why they couldn't even handle the defective Spitfires. The Battle of Britain was over, but World War II was still on. The weird issue with the Spitfires especially came up when they did a nosedive. When a plane starts to drop fast in free fall, anything that isn't secured, like the pilot's blood flowing in their bodies and the fuel in the engine's carburetor, doesn't get pulled down by gravity. Instead, it gets pushed upwards. Unfortunately, it was a problem with the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine's carburetor. The fuel outlets were located at the bottom, so when the aircraft pitched forward quickly, the fuel in the carburetor would move up and away from the outlets. This meant the engine wasn't getting any fuel, which would either cause the engine to stall or start sputtering until it leveled out again. To tackle this problem, some of the best minds in the world were brought in, including Cyril LF from Rolls-Royce and A.D. Fisher from the Royal Aircraft Establishment. Both came up with some clever technical solutions, but neither one was completely successful. The failed solutions led to a new issue in the plane. To really get what was going on, 
you needed a deep understanding of the engine, which is why it was pretty surprising that in 1940, the last and best solution came from a woman we now know as Beatrice Schilling. Back in 1938, while the first production test flights of the Spitfire were happening, Beatrice, a well-known lady in the field, rebuilt and tested her favorite ride, a 490cc Norton motorcycle. That was the same bike she raced at the Brooklyn's racetrack. But the fastest woman rider, Schilling, was an amazing racer. And even better, she was an engineer. She had a passion for motorcycles since childhood. Around 1919, when Butts was just 10 years old, she noticed her sisters going on cycling trips while she always stayed behind. So she decided to save up for a motorcycle. By the time she turned 14, she reached her goal and bought a two-stroke Royal Enfield. Little by little, she started fixing her bike herself. And before long, she was able to take it apart and put it back together again. As soon as the year began, she decided that engineering was going to be her true career. The only problem was that it was 1924, and society back then couldn't even imagine girls becoming engineers. With the help of the Women's Engineering Society, in October 1929, she enrolled in the Department of Electrical Engineering at Victoria University of Manchester, where no girl had ever been admitted before. Later, she even got the chance to take classes in thermodynamics and mechanical engineering which were her real interests. She was definitely an engineer, but she was also a woman who raced against men on the Brooklyn's track. And she was able to do that because she had made some modifications to the carburetor of her 490cc Norton motorcycle, which boosted its pickup ridiculously. At that time, Schilling didn't even realize it, but her skill was about to solve the biggest problem with Spitfire and Hurricane fighters during World War II. Before the war, Schilling had already spent three years working at the Royal Aircraft Establishment. Her job was just to write technical documentation. But by November 1939, after several promotions, Schilling had risen to the position of technical officer. Now, she was responsible for the research and development of carburetors. When the Rolls-Royce engineers couldn't solve the fire issue, Schilling sought permission from the authorities to tackle the problem. At first, everyone underestimated her because she was a woman. But surprisingly, Schilling managed to fix the issue in just a few days. The authorities couldn't help but laugh at themselves when they saw her solution. He did something pretty clever. Schilling just designed a small brass restrictor with a specially sized hole. Once he fit that into the carburetor, it really solved most of the ship's issues. The best part about this solution was that you could install this brass plate while standing in the ship, meaning it didn't take much time. Now, the biggest challenge was getting it installed in different bases for the speed fires. For that, Schilling also used his Norton and went around to various bases. This solution, installed in Spitfire and Hurricane fighters, was so effective that it got named after Miss Schilling's office. This small plate didn't completely solve the pilot's biggest issue, but it definitely helped a lot. Later on, Schilling designed a brand new carburetor for the Rolls-Royce Merlin, which permanently fixed the problem. After winning World War II, pilots credited all their success to Schilling's ingenuity. In recognition of her hard work, she was honored with the Order of the British Empire, OBE. After World War II, Schilling chose to work on new and advanced military projects instead of leaving engineering. By 1950, his work had expanded into new fields like rocketry, ramjets, and guided weapons. In 1955, Schilling was appointed as the senior principal scientific officer at the Royal Aircraft Establishment. Schilling wasn't just a mechanic or engineer. He was an incredible character who was paving the way for women in engineering. It's still widely believed that if Schilling hadn't been around during World War II, the world map might look quite different today. It's not always like it looks today. 
I hope you all give this video a ton of likes and shares too. Thank you so much for your heartfelt comments. See you in the next amazing video.